How's it going? Welcome to the shop. Hope you're having a great day. Today's going to be a little bit different for the beginner knife maker. Alright, here we go. Welcome back to the shop. This is the knife I'm going to give away when I get to a thousand subs. I'm about 40 away from it or like 35 away from it now. I put black oxide on the flats and Sam sent me his logo so I'll have both the logos on there. What I've decided is if you want this knife you got to start commenting now but I'll ship it international. You have to check with your countries or whatever. I'll pay for shipping but I'm not going to pay custom. Custom fees can be a lot of money so make sure to check your laws. Can knives be shipped without going through customs or what the custom fee is? Because if they take the knife, there's nothing I can do about it. But from this video on, you're going to have to state, I'm in. When you put, I'm in, I'm going to put your name on a list and put a number by it. From here to a thousand subs, you can comment on every video. That's fine. You can, you can comment as much as you want, ask me as many questions. I encourage you to ask questions. But I'm only going to put one I'm in per video. So, you know, sometimes I'll watch a video and I'll make a comment. Then I'll watch something more and I'll make another comment. So I could comment two or three times on one video of another knife maker. But only put I'm in one time. Because that's all it's going to be counted for on that name. But say I put out 10 videos from here to a thousand subs. That'll be 10 entries for you. Uh, give some feedback. You know, let me know what you're thinking. You know, I want to build a community here. Talk with other guys that are commenting on the videos. Let's build this into a community so we can help each other. That's my main focus of this whole YouTube thing is to get everyone helping out each other. So don't just say I'm in. Put a comment of stuff you don't like. That's fine too. Hey Dave, I see you need to improve here. That's great. You know, any criticism, constructive criticism, any ideas. If you see me doing something wrong and think you have a way you can do it right, that's fine too. But I want to start getting everyone helping each other. Let's get on with this tutorial. So it occurred to me, because one of my subscribers was asking all these questions, a lot of you might not know what knife makers are talking about when you're watching these YouTube videos. I learned on YouTube just like a lot of you are doing, but I get so far ahead that I don't realize some of you might not catch on to what I'm saying or why I'm doing what I'm doing or other knife makers. Mainly I'm speaking for myself, but since I learned on YouTube, I noticed a lot of guys use these same terms and do these same things. So I'm going to go into a little bit to help you, the new knife maker, with terms that you might not understand. Now if you've been making knives a while, this might not be for you. But you also might learn something new that you forgot about. A lot of times, I'll go back and watch other knife makers be like, Oh man, I completely forgot about that. So let's get to it. Number one, dicamine and marking out your blade for doing bevels. I know... A lot of you guys are saying, oh, we all know what dicum is, but why do we use it? Because when you're dipping your blades, when it gets hot, it doesn't wash off like marker. Now, some of these mark-all pens or stuff like that are just as good, but they're so small, you know, you mark it down, and they won't wash off when you're dipping your blade. I'll use these to put out my design a lot of times to cut. And then there's silver. For when I'm doing like black G10 and stuff like that, I'll use the silver ones. It's like this. Mark all pens are great for laying out your design and cutting and dike them for when, you know, you want to lay out a whole big surface. Because instead of sitting there marking, 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 you just take it. And this comes in spray and all kinds of stuff. A lot of times you'll see me marking the blade after it's been dikeumed up, you know, with calipers. You can use old calipers. Don't use nice new calipers, calipers and ruin them. I've got a set of Michitoyo that I use for doing all my precision measuring and all that. And then I got the beat up pair that I use for scribing things out and all that stuff. You can also make your own, which it's pretty easy. This is just a, a block of aluminum 
a, a half inch pin, you know, like you big old, you go to Home Depot and buy a half inch round, drilled a hole in it, tapped it, boom, tapped it here. So you just drill a hole in the aluminum, put the half inch piece in, see this slides in and out. This is a tungsten electro from a TIG welder. Sharpen it up on the belt sander and it lasts for a long time. You can just, I, some people cut them short to make it look better, but the more you grind off, the more you just slide it down and don't even have to worry about it. Now to the surface plate. If you're getting into knife making, you definitely want a surface plate and shop rags so you can clean everything off. <laughs> you always want to make sure this is nice and flat and doesn't get nicked. I actually found another one that's over by my heat treat oven that's like 12 inches by 2 foot that I keep out there and I put it under a piece of wood and all that. But you always want to check. Make sure your stuff is flat both ways. Now here's one thing. If you put it on one side and it's flat and you flip it over and it starts rocking, you have to straighten it. You know, you always want to try to get your stuff straight before heat treat. Because that will affect how you mark your lines. Now here's the height gauge. I'll put links to the plate. I think they still have the height gauge. You want to make sure if you get a height gauge, it has the carbide tip. It, does, it won't mark good if it doesn't have the carbide tip. And then you take it and you set your height and you mark it. A lot of times I'll, I'll put Dykema on the back and use that as a reference to get it how I want. And then flip it over and do that. With dike them, if you mess up, you can just dike them over it and you'll be fine. Like watch, I put a line here. See, there's two lines there. Take a little dike them. And it's gone. Now you want to put this on thin. And you always want to close and lock, close and tighten this dike them or it'll be all over your bench. If you watch me, I have plenty of spots where the dike them spilled. I used to wear my Alex Steel shirt that said Dike them steel, and it was like inevitable. I'd knock it over, and you'll see it starting to dry. So, see, no more marks where I just put it. Now, if you don't have a height gauge, what you can do is you use drill bits. What you want to do, well, if you want a small center line, use the exact same size as your steel. But if you use one that's a little bigger or a little smaller, you mark it one. And then you mark your other and then you want to go down to those two middle lines all right so now you're here you got your lines a little bit wider so you before heat treat this way you don't have to worry about the blade warping or anything the closer you keep them together the more chances of warping now some guys like to be, bring it down to like a dime size me i like to keep it about in thirds I'll break them in thirds. The thicker you make it, the less chance of warp. So you got them like this. You want to take an old belt, put the old belt on, and break the 90s. See, this is 90 degrees here. Thanks for asking about this, Chip. This, you want to break this 90, put an old belt on. You don't want to use a new belt. If you put a brand new belt on, and you push this into the grinder, a whole bunch of grit is just going to come off, and you're going to waste half that belt. So put an old belt on, break the 90s, just down to an angle. You just want to bring your right, you want to grind it right down to that line. Maybe at like a 45 degree or whatever. It doesn't have to be much. You just want to bring it right down to the line. Flip it over, do the same on the other side. Put a brand new belt on. Then you start your bevels. You come down, you grind it down. And as you come down to your line, say here. Here's our line. So we come down to that line, and then you want to come back up, and there'll be a little facet where you broke that 90, and you want to just remove that facet and go straight down to that line. A lot of times I use calipers. You don't want to use your good calipers to be marking steel. You want to get a cheap pair. I got links to both Michitoyo, because I use Michitoyo for precision measuring and all that, and then I use a cheap pair just to mark. So I don't have to worry about it. Or you can take this. Now if it's straight, you want to use this. Boom. Put your mark in. Always mark your sides before you mark your bottom. Because when you all of a sudden, 
when you mark your sides, it's going to wipe off the bottom. When it comes to recurves and stuff, you can't use something like that. See, it's flat. It's going to keep it straight. Always use calipers on stuff like recurves. That way you can follow the lines. Unless you want to make it straight, then you can, you know, do a straight line. But that's up to you. How you want to do your grinds, that's all a choice. So, anytime you have something like that, you want to follow it, use calipers. If it's straight, you know, make one of these and they work perfect. Let me just stop here to ask a question. Um, I have a few guys that said they'd like to watch knife making videos like all the way through where I didn't speed stuff up. I'm thinking about, because I have a Patreon page, but I haven't been asking people to donate because I want to build my audience before I start asking for more. You know, I feel bad enough with the Amazon links and all that. Let me know if you think I should start making videos that are a lot longer and just put them on my Patreon where you can go and watch them, you know, give me a little monthly kickback and learn for the knife maker if you are a beginner knife maker. Now band saws. This is just a cheapo Harbor Freight, $100. But if you have the money, invest in one. Because if you're doing everything with the angle grinder, it's a lot more time consuming and just slows down product productivity. Now you might like doing with an angle grinder and that's fine. But if you can, move up to a bandsaw. It's one of the best investments I've made. When you buy it, it comes with a little piece right here. All I did is cut out two holes in a piece of steel and plop it down on there. You can buy the tables and all that stuff. This is just sitting in my vise and it sits in my vise all the time. In fact, I bought a second vise just so I can have this always sitting here because I use it for every build. Cut out all my stuff with this. It's definitely a great tool to have. You know, if you can afford a used Milwaukee or a new Milwaukee, get the better one. But these Harbor Freights, I've had this probably three years now, or almost three years now, and it's worked out great. When you're looking into a grinder, you know, I use two horsepower. 1.5 should be good enough. One, I see a lot of guys debate with whether one is good enough. It'll work, but honestly, I would save up more. And a lot of guys use pulleys and love it, but you need a VFD. Now I have to warn you, you'll be tempted to buy those Chinese VFDs for like a hundred bucks. It'll work. I've got one right here and I've had it for a while, but they only last about a year. And if you keep it next to your grinder, it's going to blow up. It's going to get metal dust. Notice I keep it covered at all times. Before I invested in this, I blew up five of them. They had really good warranties and they'll give them back, you know, they'll replace them. They might not do it anymore. That's the last one standing. And when that blows, I'll buy another one of these because it's worth the extra money. 200 bucks more for one of these, but this is going to last. You know, you can spray this down with a hose and it'll last. The Chinese ones, they'll get you through, but if you're gonna buy one, make sure you put it about 10 feet away from your grinder and make sure it's covered. Can't get any metal dust into it. Once you get metal dust in it, boom, it's gonna blow. Which brings me to vertical grinders and horizontal grinders. Now, I've never really showed this in any of my videos, but I built this horizontal grinder. It's real easy. It's just three pieces of steel with a two inch diameter square welded together on two plates. Well, it's on a three eighth inch plate so I can slide it in here and slide it in here and slide it in here. Now, when I first built this, I was planning on having my wheel in here and then another one with work rest and all that stuff like a Wilmot grinder and it's all attached straight to my bed. There's a lot of little adjustments. That's why you saw this in here. I put this under here to hold this up. This slides in. This is attached right to my bench too. It's just a lag bolt into my bench, three quarter plywood. I got a spring that holds it to the bench too to keep pressure on it. This I just welded two pieces of steel like this, tapped them, then 
tap this so it slides up and tap this and this is my tracking go up and down I bought this wheel tap this piece too and that's the arm goes right back in screws down right into my bench works fine and then the spring right here attaches down to the bench now here's the switch for it I run it all the way over the wall 10 feet away so on switch well First you kick it on, then you can switch it, and then here's the variable speed. This used to be a fan, but it used to go, I had to, I used to have the VFD right here. And I blew two of them, and that's why I moved it over there. The motor, the motor is just attached under the bench. There's a big hole right here in the bench. Slid it down, uh, put a piece of wood into the studs here, and then just attach the motor to that so it runs. Now, I will say, you can see all the little, washers here sometimes i'll have to slide washers under it to get it up and down and move it perfect but you have to have a horizontal grinder people often ask me you know what kind of grinder do you have well that's a kmg i bought a kmg but if i had it to do over i'd probably buy like a reader or a wilmot a north ridge something that goes horizontal so you have it all in one well, before you ask, I don't have plans. With any of my contraptions, I think I'm up in my head like the heat treat oven. I built that just out of my head. You know, the grinder, I thought of it, and I kind of threw it together and I tune it as I go. So I don't really have plans for any of this stuff. So I think that's about it. If you have any other questions that you want to know, leave them in the comments. I'll try to get back to you on it. You know, if you can think of anything you want, any videos you want me to do on knife making or, or something you're getting stuck on that maybe I can help you with, leave it in the comments. I'll either make a video on it or I'll do my best to help you with it. So I think that's about it. This is just a short video to help out you beginner knife makers to learn some of the terms knife makers are talking about. I hope it helps. I got Evader Knife shirts on my website. I got one or two knives up there. There's affiliate links in the description. I really appreciate all the support. And let me know if you want to win the knife. Just say I'm in. But you have to make sure I can ship it to your country. And I'll pay for shipping and all that. One vote per video. But comment as much as you want. You have to say I'm in on the video to be in, and I'll put your number on the list. Thanks for watching. I hope you're having a great day. Thanks for all the support. And as always, take it easy. Ha <laughs> ha. In my last video. Welcome back to the shop. Realize, some of you not, might not realize, some of, I don't realize some of you, you know, you know, you, you know, do, you know, make, you know, so you, you won't have to worry about... Oh,